Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Proactivity Open P1AM Industrial Arduino Modbus TCP to see more EA9. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there'll be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There'll be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So open my screen here, you see that we have an example from Automation Direct and it's under the P1AM samples on GitHub. And this one here deals with the P1AM-100 uh, talking to the Modbus TCP server HMI. So what it does is the P1AM acts as a server or slave and your HMI, in this case here, is going to be the EA9 series, uh, will talk to the um, Arduino controller through the Ethernet module. And it's actually, it's acting as the master or client in this example. So what we do is we're gonna use two of these programs here. We have the Modbus TCP server that we download. This is the uh, uh, P1AM sample program. And then we have our P1AM driver, a Seymour. Now they used version uh, 6.52, but we're at 6.61 right now, so we'll we have to update that as well. So, again, all these uh, all these documents are available for download at our website at accautomation.ca. So, once we have that downloaded, what we'll do is we will look at the um, the Modbus TCP server application. So we call that up through our P1AM and what it does is it uh, will open up our our Ethernet. So it first of all includes our cards P1AM. Then we also have to include our library which is the Arduino RS485 and the Arduino Modbus. This program is subject to that or, or dependent on that. In order to make sure that it's there if we go to sketch and include library Go to Manage Libraries, and when we call that up, we can type in Arduino, Modbus, and when we do, it'll come up with the Arduino Modbus. There we go. And you can see here, currently it is installed. And you'll notice here, the library depends on the Arduino RS485 library as well. So if we look at the Arduino RS485, then you'll see here, it's also installed. And if it wasn't, then we would just hit install and install that and make sure we have the latest package. So that looks like it's all set to go. Then what you'll see is that we um, include those two libraries as well as we include our Ethernet card and our P1AM, which includes all the I.O. So what we're going to do is share those I.O. And the first thing we'll do is take a look at our uh, MAC address of our Ethernet card. Now, if we were to look at that, um, here it is right here. If you take the card apart, there's a sticker on the side here that shows your MAC address, and it's lo located right here. So there's mine here, and that's what we need in order to program this card. So again, we're gonna have our Ethernet card, we're gonna have our CPU unit, the uh, Arduino, we're gonna have our simulator input, and we're gonna have some outputs. So that's what we need. And if we go back to our program now, you'll see that we put that MAC address right in here. Then we set our IP address to uh, 192.168.1.177. And this is, the, this is going to be the IP address of the server so that our client can talk to that server. And then we set up our Modbus inputs and outputs and bits that we can, or registers that we can actually read and write to. So Modbus coils bits are going to be uh, 16 of them. Then we're going to have Modbus 16 input and then we're going to have 16 holding registers and 16 
uh, Modbus input registers. So that's what we are able or what we're exposing from our uh, P1AM. Then we write our server port 502, Ethernet clients, and then we go into the program. And what it does is then, is on the serial port, what it does is wait for the serial port to connect, then it will print out that our Modbus server is ready, and then it will tell us if we are configured and when we're connected. So we must do that. And then once we're finished with that, um, you can see that all we're basically doing is um, exposing those, those values to our client. So that is our uh, Modbus uh, TCB server. Next, what we do is we are going to take a look at our Seymour. And on a Seymour, this is the driver that uh, it was written on the, on, the, on the website of the GitHub. We've taken it and we've modified it and we've changed it so that it will communicate to a headless Seymour. So if we go up to setup and we go to panel manager, you will see that on my panel type, we have an EA9 RHMI, and then we have our project resolution that we've set as 720 by 480, which is the closest one that we had to our existing program. Then what we did was we clicked on the display large keypad on the panel, because when we look at um, the unit, when we do remote IO, it's much better to have a large keypad there. And then we've enabled the beep. So that's our, our settings there. And if we go to our Ethernet port, we've got our PLC protocol, which is our Modicon Modbus TCP IP Ethernet. We have the IP address of 192.168.1.177, which was the same IP address that we just set in the P1AM. So they are identical. So we just say uh, cancel that. And then what we can do is we can look at the panel or the setup and go to panel network. And under panel network, I like to always give the panel a name. In this case here, we're going to be calling it P1AM client. Our ethernet port. If we look down here, you'll see the enable IP address to be changed from software. That's currently enabled and we'll just leave that enabled right now. Um, it's a default, but it will give us some error messages, error messages when we download to the actual unit. Then what we have is um, we go to a web server and on the web server we must enable the web server. You'll see it's port number 80 and the page title is web server and we had a password option. It's ACC with a password of ACCA. And what we do is we enable the web server in order to get the Windows based software package downloaded so we can control this remotely. Then on remote access we turn this on and this is uh, defaults to port number 11102 and then down here we are setting up account number one for full control so we can um, view all the pages we can change pages and we can also change values again we set the same account name ACC you can change this to anything you want and a password ACCA and we can actually have 15 different uh, uh, users at one time connected to this uh, HMI and each account can have a maximum of five users so this here we have number three or three users at, at one time so that's our setup for our remote then what we do is we just send that over to the controller now there's also a simulation on our Seymour software that we can just simulate and we'll simulate the um, unit right now. So there's my simulation. There's my uh, driver, what's going to, or my page, that's what's going to look like. And you can see here, as I change the values, let's uh, put a value in here, put one, two, three, four, enter, and it puts one, two, three, four there and there. And we can change one here, uh, five, six, seven, eight, enter that, you see it back over here. Our inputs, if we just turn it on, you can see it highlights it. So that's what it's going to look like on our screen. If we uh, hit the output, we turn that on. And hit it again, we turn it off. 
So we can test our program just to make sure that everything's going to work before we actually send it off to our controller. So let's just uh, get out of that. And then we can go ahead and send that down to our uh, HMI. The other thing that we uh, uh, can look at is our tag database. Under database, tag name. And these are all of the uh, um, addresses that we have for all of our inputs and outputs. So they're all available there and we can check like for example input number one you can see here that this is uh, Modbus address memory type one input number one. And that's all been set already in that sample program. So we send that down and then what we can do is um, we can take a look. These are my input lights. These are my outputs. This is my uh, numeric display and my numeric uh, entry. So all this is all set now. Next, let's take a look at the hardware that we have. And... And you'll see here is my power supply, and my power supply is powering up my P1AM uh, uh, dash 100. So, and it's also used to power up the I/O cards. We also have it powering up our EA9 RHMI, which is the headless Seymour model for HMI. You can see here that we're communicating via the. Um, Ethernet port and there's my power supply that I'm powering. Over here my P1AM Ethernet card there's my uh, communication port here and we also are communicating serially like our program says that we're going to show when we get connect. So let's call back our P1AM software and we will uh, upload that to the controller so it's going to compile it and then upload it it just takes one minute or so and you'll see that this is very straightforward to actually uh, create our Modbus client server. So it's uploading right now and the upload's done. So that is our program. And you'll see that we have our um, Seymour here and we would just hit the send command. And we would just go through the ethernet port and then we can transfer that over. Now I've already done that, so we'll just close that down. And the next thing we have to do is look at our serial communication port. So once we open that up, you can see that we have our Modbus TCP server. Then on slot number one, we have our simulator and uh, a simulator input. And then on slot number two, we have our 16-bit output. And done with the setup, and then our client has accepted. So we now we have one client now communicating, which is our uh, HMI. So the first thing we'll do is, again, we'll go back to um, our remote I.O. or remote access to see what this HMI is doing. So let's call up our um, web server. In our web server, we type in our name, ACC and the password ACCA and when we do we can then go to remote access and then what we can do is we can uh, download directly the software that we need to program the remote once that's downloaded okay we can then call that up and when we start it again it'll ask me for um, my username, ACC, and password, ACCA. And now this is what the 
it actually looks like. We were actually uh, calling it up here. And there is my uh, writing registers. So let's, let's look at their input here. And if I turn on switch number one, you can see that my light lights up. And let's do three and maybe five or yeah, something like that. And there's our lights. If we want our outputs to turn on, turn on the output here. And you'll see the corresponding output on the uh, Arduino turn on or off. And we can turn on a couple of them. There we go. And so you see that's very quick and very easy to implement. Now what we can do also is we can also uh, take a look at this software on our Android or iOS system. We have remote access. And if we call up the system, I have my uh, cell phone right here. You can see that the driver's all written. And what we can do is unlock this. And let's take a look and let's put in a number in uh, this location here. And we'll put uh, 3354, enter. And you see the 3354 entered here. And then you'll also see it on our other remote station right here. If I enter it here, then what'll happen is I'll put in uh, oh, 4567, enter. And you'll see again, it uh, enters on both these screens. So very nice feature and it's very easy to implement our remote access to a lot of these terminals. And the other thing you have uh, along with this uh, headless is you also have a um, HDMI port out, which is back underneath here. So you can put a large screen TV and have a display of exactly what's happening in your process. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the videos, please leave a, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the, scroll, in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click that bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.